What's going on, guys? Uh, working on one of our projects today. Uh, so, those of you who know me know that I love motorcycles, old cars. That's a project. That's a project. There's a couple projects over there. All that's other projects. But today we're working on the uh, 75kz400. So I haven't ridden this thing in God knows how long, probably over a year. And the last time that I was riding it, uh, it was running like crap. Like it was running on one cylinder, but not all the time. Sometimes the second cylinder would kick in, sometimes it would go off. I didn't know what was going on. But since it had been sitting for so long, I had to clean out the carbs anyway. Because uh, the last time when I parked it, I had not drained it of all the fuel. So I actually got this uh, ultrasonic cleaner. I uh, got it used off of eBay from a dentist's office. It was big enough to, you know, do what I needed it to do. Uh, ordered it, got it for pretty cheap, and I went about cleaning these carbs as best I could. Now, they don't look pretty from the outside, but it's the inside that counts, right? Got all the passages clean, verified that they were all clean. Uh, everything was great. And then when I'm putting it back together, I noticed this that little hole right there there that's supposed to be blanked off kind of like that one this is one that i did uh several years ago there are some passages for the idle jet system uh, that go through there there's a small passage in there you can see it uh, just on the perimeter of the on the wall there um and, uh, you know, so there, there are several passages in here from the needle, uh, from, you know, the Venturi, from other places. And I figured it was like, okay, maybe that's what's going on. I don't know when it fell out. I think the first time that I rebuilt these when I first got the bike, uh, this one had fallen out. So I went ahead and, um, you know, just fabricated that out of uh, a nylon screw. I didn't know when this one came out, so that's probably what happened when it started running like crap. So I went to Granger and I picked up this. And this little guy is a uh, three, three eighths uh, inch diameter, one foot length, um, extruded uh, six, six nylon in black. And uh, this cost me about a dollar something. So I picked it up and so now I'm gonna be making the plug that goes in there. Now the first thing that we're going to do is cut a small section of that rod so we can work with it. There is a very small ridge inside that tiny hole that it goes down to. Uh, it's about, uh, I'd say about uh, three millimeters deep. So. You know, we have to account for it being about three millimeters deep and then a little bit extra, like maybe uh, anywhere between a quarter to a half an inch, kind of like this one sticking out so that I can work with it. I'm going to use my little saw here, Dremel saw, um, to cut this whole baby to about one inch, I'd say. So, let's, uh, let's get that taken care of. So we got our little piece here, and this is what we're going to be working with. I've mounted the piece of uh, nylon rod that uh, I cut off onto my drill. Use it kind of like a, a small lathe. I don't have a mini lathe. I don't love to get one, but I'm going to leave it on here. Um, and then I'm basically just going to sand it down. Uh, it's not that much smaller, or the, the rod is not that much larger than the port that we're trying to cover. Uh, so I'm going to take it really slow and keep checking it, you know, uh, sand it down a little bit, try to slip it on, sand it down, slip it on, sand it down, slip it on until it's, uh, it can barely fit in there with the very snug fit. And then we will go ahead and epoxy it into the port So 
has a long way to go. like we're there slips right in snugly to where it's not too loose where it falls out if you flip it around and by the looks of it it goes in right at about two two and a half millimeters which is perfect uh, you know it won't interfere with the passages and the orifices that are uh, in that little uh, cavity. Uh, so I think this part is done. Now I just want to kind of reduce the the other side. Have it look a little bit more uniform. I mean that it's really not necessary because it's not going to affect the way it works. Uh, but you know, just want to kind of clean it up, make it look nice. So that's what I'm going to do next. the saw on this so I can make a little bit faster work of that uh, you can see let me just angle it right it's just hanging on by a little nub so that I will cut off with these uh, with this uh, razor blade just didn't want this shooting off into nowhere and not being able to find it again having to do all this thing all over again there we go so it is now free. We got our little plug here. And uh, let's uh, check it out on the carp, see how good it fits. Here we go, we'll press it in. And it is snug, nice fitting. epoxy on this plug be careful not to put too much we don't want it to drip inside that cavity and plug up one of those holes that we've been trying to clean out with the ultrasonic so that looks about right um, you know, most of this epoxy is going to be uh, squeezed back out once we set it in. But just want to make sure. Better safe than sorry. So we come over here. Let's go ahead and set it in. Push it down. You can see where the epoxy is kind of uh, being squeezed out there. There along the sides. It's gone in as far as it can, so now we're just going to let that dry and set. Um, and this is why I like this so much. Easy cleanup. All right, so that is there. And this is a 90 second set epoxy. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give this a few hours to kind of set and then uh, we'll come back and check on it. Well, I'll, I'll probably just uh, check on this tomorrow. Um, so we're just going to wait a few hours for it to set and once it's ready uh, we'll come back and see if we can install these uh, guys uh, back on the KZ400 um, and get her running again. So thanks for tuning in and next video should be of these guys going into the bike.
and uh, trying to start her up. So stay tuned for that.